Hello and welcome to another video in our series on the labour market. Uh, we're looking here at demographic change, which is any change in the population, for example, in terms of average age, dependency ratios, life expectancy, etc. And in this short video, we're asking the question, what are the key drivers of population growth? Take a moment to look at the population summary for the UK in 2014. The mid-year estimate of the total population was 64.6 million people. And crucially, from the point of view of this video, uh, the UK population has increased by just under 10% since 2001. Now, the average percentage change in the UK population is under 1% per year. There's been a lot of media interest in the rapidly growing UK population and uh, some other extreme forecasts of where the population might be, for example, in 15 years. But this chart tells us that actually for most years, the change in the population, although positive, has been less than 1%, averaging around 0.75%. Albeit in 2015, the population grew by 0.81%. Now, there are two key drivers of population growth. There is natural population growth, which is the birth rate minus the death rate. Follow the line in blue in this chart, and we can see that the natural growth of population has edged up actually in the last 10 to 15 years, from under 100,000 per year to over 200,000 per year. So, for example, in 2014, the growth of population due to the birth rate minus the death rate was just over 200,000 people. The second key driver of population growth is net international migration. And you can see from the UK chart, if you follow the orange line here, that net migration into the UK has been quite strongly positive, certainly over the last 10 years. Add the two together, you can see that our population, if you follow the line in grey on this chart, UK population growing in excess of 400,000 people per year since 2005 and rising above 500,000 in some of those years. So clearly, net migration has become one of the dominant economic political issues of recent times. Indeed, there has been a fairly high rate of net inward migration into the UK. Net migration rose above 300,000 in the year 2014, and again, recent data for 2015. Crucially, of course, uh, People are coming into the UK, net immigration, for example, in 2014 was over 600,000, but people leave at the same time. There's people leaving the UK, migrants coming to the UK, returning to their country of origin, or UK people deciding to live and work overseas. So the key figure for migration is net migration. And it has been strongly positive, particularly in the last 10 years. Notice the jump in 2004, when 10 member countries uh, enter the European Union. So what does this population growth mean for density? Well, the evidence is that the UK population density has nudged higher from about 250 inhabitants per square kilometre in 20, uh, 2004 to just under 270 inhabitants per square kilometre in 2015. And there has also been a small a subtle but important increase in the degree of urbanisation. This chart shows the degree of urbanisation in the UK from 2005 to 2015. And it shows the percentage of the entire population that live in urban areas. Well, the latest data we have is that around 83% of the population lived in cities in 2015. And that's down from just under 80% 10 years ago. So those are the key drivers of population growth for countries such as the UK.